The city calls them cleanups, but people who live on Denver streets call them sweeps. Few policies have shaped the lives of Denver's unhoused communities more than the city of Denver's sustained and frequent efforts to remove the camps that keep popping up. Downsize it is, again. No one wants to move twice in a month. No one wants to move six times, eight times, ten times in a year. You know, I moved five times in a week once. During the three months we followed Carrie, she moved five times, or once every three weeks. The last time we interviewed her, she told us she finds her fate unnerving. I worry about a lot. I worry about that often. Um, I don't want to die out here. That clip was part of a much larger story that we're going to bring you tonight on 9 News at 9 and 10. It's the byproduct of a lengthy project by reporter Chris Vanderveen and photojournalist Chris Hansen. They join us now. So Chris, um, first of all, tell us a little bit more about the report, how this came about. Well, I, I'm the Chris Vanderveen and this is the Chris Hansen. He did the bulk of the work on this, so I really want to sort of have this rare opportunity for me as the reporter to introduce the photojournalist on the piece that really worked the bulk of the time on this project. This was a very lengthy project. We have been talking about this project for well over a year. A few months ago, you started to start shooting it. And tell me why you sort of wanted to do this story in the first place. Well, I think we've seen um, the city come into camp after camp after camp after camp. And for me as a photojournalist, often I was at, sometimes at a distance, sometimes on the outside of the fencing. And um, I wanted to, to get in and see what these experiences is like for people. So the focus of the story, really, there, you, you met a number of people along the way, but the focus of the story is really a woman named Carrie, um, who you saw in that short clip. Um, talk to me more about the willingness of Carrie, who has lived on Denver streets for four years now, the willingness for her to be so open about her life. Yeah, she was very open with me from the first day that I met her. And I really think that she's become a bit of an advocate um, amongst her community. Um, and that's why I think she was so willing to speak. What did you learn uh, through this process? I, I think uh, it was interesting for me to sort of see it. Um, and there were assumptions that I think that I had about how this process works. And it, what's interesting, I remember back in 2020, there was a lot of attention on these sweeps and or cleanups or whatever you want to call them. And what you what I now notice is that there are more of these cleanups slash sweeps in 2021, we found this out, than there were in 2020. What were some sort of overarching lessons that you think you sort of will take away from a project? Well, I think, with, I think with the number that has occurred, um, people are becoming more and more used to it. Yeah. And they're getting more used to the process of how it happens and what to expect. Still, that still doesn't make it any less disruptive to them. Yeah, this is a this is a fascinating process, and I, I got to tell you, I mean, this is the, the the opportunity, Kim and Tom, for me to really sort of boast. Uh, we all talk about the great photojournalism staff that we have here at Nine News. There's a ton of really great uh, photojournalists who work here. Chris is one of them, and it really has been a, a sort of a pleasure to sort of work with him and see this process through his eyes. And I think you're going to see that tonight. And, and that's the idea, because. Policies can be clinical, and for many people, they drive by the homeless, and they, they don't really see the actual humanity or the they see the entity of, of those who are unhoused a, instead of actually the people who are, who are living that life. Well, and, yeah, understand the policy. I mean, I know Chris, I was talking to Chris about this. You see, Carrie, on a, on sometimes a weekly basis. You have formed a relationship and a connection with her to understand how this works through her eyes. And also, you, you talked to Mayor Hancock as part of this. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie was one of those persons that you've gotten to know quite well. She's still living on Denver streets this night and will be, and she didn't want to be out here for another winter, and yet she knows she's going to be out here for another winter. I think what's interesting, too, Kim and Tom, is this idea of how much of a stubborn problem this has been for the mayor. You mentioned Mayor Hancock, and we interviewed him for, as part of this piece. He was very open about it, but this has been a problem for the city of Denver and for his administration because as long as people continue to see these camps on the streets, they're going to recognize this problem. Hopefully we give a little insight as to the extent of the problem and where the problem has sort of morphed over the last year and a half. It, it might be the 
biggest problem that uh, the, the next mayor, of course, yeah. will face yes. as well when it comes to uh, the way people view the, the city and, and those people who are unhoused. Yeah. Uh, Chris Vanderbeen, Chris Hansen, thanks very much. We'll have uh, that story coming for you tonight at 9 and 10 o'clock.